الله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل الله ومن يؤذن فلا هدي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأختار الله شريك الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We seek Allah's help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil in our souls and our bad deeds. Whom Allah, as a wajal, guides will never be led astray. And whoever Allah, as a wajal, leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no deity but Allah, the one having no partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is Allah's final slave and messenger. Ya ayyuha ladina amanu taqwallaha haqatu qatihi wa la tamotunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who have believed, fear Allah as Allah alone should be feared and do not die except as Muslims in submission to Allah. Ya ayyuha nasu taqo rabakum ala dikallakakum min nafsi wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha min humu rijalan kathira wa nafsa'a wa taqo la ladhi tasa'aluna bihi wa alham inna laha kana alaykum raqiba O people be dutiful to your Lord who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both many men and women and fear Allah for whom you demand your mutual rights and revere the wombs that bore you. Indeed, it lies ever over you, al Akib, an observer. Ya ayyuha ladina amanu taqullaha wa kulu kaulun sadida yuslilikum amalikum wa yaqfilikum dhanubakum wa ma yuta illaha rasuluhu faqad fawz wa fawz wa azimah. O oh, you who have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. Allah will then amend for you your deeds and forgive you for your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and Allah's messenger has attained a great attainment. And so today, as I said, I want to talk about the virtues of this month that we're in, Shawwal. And then I want to talk about retaining and maintaining after the month of Ramadan. So Ibn Abdullah al-Shafi, and you will know that he is the so-called father of the Shafi school. And we have four major schools, Hanafi, Hanbali, Shafi, and Maliki, said that the meaning of Shawwal was taken from the Arabic word uh, Salat al-Ibil, which means the camel lifted up or straightened up his tail. That meaning was taken due to the habit of ancient Arabs who used to hang their weapons because the haram months were about to come. Months where they were not allowed to be at war. Uh, and this is taken from a book uh, called Dalil al-Falihin the Sahar Riyadash Shalihin by Muhammad ibn Allah Ash uh, Shidiki is his name. Yeah. Um, so after Shawal, people are going to encounter the months of Dhul Qa'ada, Dhul Hijjah, and Muharram, wherein no war or battle is allowed to take place. Now, there's a, uh, there are other opinions which mention that the use of the word shawal was due to the superstition of the Arabs who believed that this month is bad for their luck. Uh, thus, they forbade marriage during this month. Um, of course, this is jahil, this is jahiliya, ignorance. Uh, they dubbed it with shawal because the women refused to be married in this month, just as the she-camel refuses her male counterpart by lifting up its tail. So this is to sort of give you how some of these names came about. Here's what I want you to learn and what is very important. The most important thing is that fasting six days of this month, and remember at the fifth, so you basically got 24, 25 days. If you want to avail yourself to this reward, 
fasting, six days of shawal after the obligatory fast of Ramadan is called Sunnah Mustahaba. Uh, it is an encouraged Sunnah. It's not obligatory. It's not a fard. And in the Hanafi school, wajib means obligatory. It's not wajib either. But it is recommended when something is mustahaba that certain people in the community do it. And so it is recommended for the Muslim to fast six days of shawal. And in this, there is great virtue and immense reward. Whoever fasts these six days will have recorded for them a reward as if they had fasted a whole year. So think about it. In the month of Ramadan, you got your sins forgiven. And now if you fast here in the six days in this month of Shawwal, it is as if you had fasted a whole year. So think about all of those rewards. So I recommend that you perhaps do Mondays and Thursdays here on out to try to make up those six days that you choose. And you could also add to it the middle three days of the this month. Abu Ayyub reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, whoever fasts Ramadan and follows it with six days of shawal, it will be as if they fasted for a lifetime. And this is narrated by Ahmed, Muslim, Abu Dawood, Al-Tirmidhi, and An-Nisa, and Ibn Majah. So this is a very, very authentic classification of Ahadith. And so it's like a year and then it's like a lifetime. So this indicates something that we would not want to pass by this opportunity. The Prophet ﷺ explained this when he said, whoever fasts for six days after I eat all fitter has completed the year. Whoever does a good deed, hasana, hasana, will have 10 hasana like it. According to another report, Allah has made for each hasana 10 like it. So a month is like fasting 10 months and fasting six days completes the year. So this is what I call spiritual mathematics, um, miraculous mathematics. These are unbelievable returns on an investment in our time. The Hanbali and the Shafi Fukaha explained that fasting six days of Shawal after fasting Ramadan makes it as if one has fasted for an entire year of obligatory fast because the multiplication of the reward applies even to nafil fast because each hasana brings the reward of 10 like it. Another of the important benefits of fasting six days of shawal is that you can make up the shortfall of your obligatory Ramadan. So like let's say you didn't get 100 one day, you got 90 on your fasting. This actually helps you make up uh, and get bonus points, you might say. That might be a good way of putting it. On the day of resurrection, some of a believer's nafal deeds, not obligatory deeds, will be taken up to make up the shortcomings of the believer's obligatory deeds. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, the first thing for which people will be brought to account on the day of resurrection will be their the day of resurrection will be their salah. Our Lord, may He be glorified and exalted, will say to His angels, although He knows best, look at the salah of my servant, whether it is complete or incomplete. Did they make a hundred or did they make eighty? If it is perfect, it will be recorded as perfect. And if something is lacking, he will say, look and see whether my slave did any nafal prayers, sunnah prayers. If they did some voluntary prayers, Allah Azawajal will say, complete the obligatory actions of my slave from his voluntary action. So people will often say, oh, that's just a sunnah. Oh, that's just a sunnah. No, that sunnah helps make up for the shortfall when perhaps we're not worshiping with Kashur, we're not praying with Kashur. And then the Hadith finishes by saying then all of their actions will be dealt with in a similar manner. This is 
MashaAllah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always making a way for us, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. And so we'll move into, inshallah, talking about how to retain and maintain post Ramadan. So it's really interesting because I had made a goal that I would continue to read a page. My original goal was a page in Arabic for every raka'a in my fard prayers that were allowed, that were allowed or audible, as you would say. Well, the day after Aid, I had the lecture at Valencia. So that meant I had to travel to Orlando. And so I just found it really hard to start to fulfill my new goal. And then tomorrow I'll have the surgery. Um, so alhamdulillah, if you find that you're trying to maintain, these are some things that inshallah will help us all to retain and maintain the greatness of what we experienced in Ramadan. In Sunan an nisa the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about the most beloved of good deeds to Allah, to which he replied that much, that which is most regular and constant, those that are established and continuous, even if they are few. So we want to establish good deeds for the sake of Allah. And again, he said, the most beloved good deeds to Allah, that is which is done most regularly and consistently, they are established and continuous, even if they're few. So Allah would rather you do something and do it consistently than to just do something here and there. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, was asked, did the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, choose some special days for fasting? She replied, no, but he used to be regular, constant in his service of worshiping. So Ramadan is a month of equal opportunity for Muslims to compete for good deeds, hasanat, barakah, and benevolence. In the blessed month of Ramadan, if we practice according to its proper conditions, our souls were trained through abstinence to disdain vices and sins and attain virtue and dignity through learning and acquiring good attributes. The Prophet Wasallam said, if any Muslim comes out of Ramadan without gaining forgiveness and goodness, they are deprived losers. So this is why, again, I start teaching three months before Ramadan, actually three months and two weeks usually, preparing believers to understand the virtues of those two months that come before and establishing the goals so that when we come out of Ramadan, we will have attained forgiveness and we will have attained goodness so that we are not among the losers. And this was narrated by Ibn Hibban and At-Tabarani. If we get lazy and stop disciplining the soul in the month of Shawwal, it will spiritually cripple us. And we will return to our old habits. Many Muslims experience a drop-off in performing good deeds consistently after the month of Ramadan. Aisha, may Allah be pleased, her narrated that the Prophet وسلم, used to say, Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from laziness and old age, from sin and debt, from the trial of the grave and the punishment of the grave and the trial of the fire. And this is narrated by Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim. So it is a travesty to see Muslims guided to do good deeds and gain the great provisions and virtues during Ramadan, hastily destroying what they built by replacing good with evil. In Surah Fusilat, Surah 41, verse 34, 
not equal. We're reminded, not equal are the good and bad deeds. Repel evil with that which is better. In Surah Arad, uh, Surah 13, verse 22, those who are patient, seeking the countenance of their Lord and establishing prayer, establishing, being consistent, on time, and spend from what we have provided for them secretly and publicly, and repel evil with good, for those will have a good end, an ultimate triumph. Replacing the good we gained in Ramadan with evil is a gross negligence and a severe disregard for the safety and well-being of our souls. It's reckless, and it is a breach of our duty and our contract and our covenant with the loss of Panama to Ireland. We're not doing things consistently. It is an extreme departure from the criterion of a loss of Panama to Ireland and the loss of Panama to Ireland's messenger, and the adabs, the etiquettes and manners and characteristics of a Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, people who only become consistent and diligent in their practice of Islam during Ramadan may gain nothing but hunger and thirst. The opposite of diligence is laziness. We sometimes refer to that as ghafla, heedlessness. And we are to make dua that we would be freed from this disease of the heart. Laziness and the ghafla is one of the most significant obstacles to obtaining success and triumphant achievement in this world and the hereafter. We know that humanity gets what they strive for. If you don't strive, you will not thrive. This and other ahadith correlate between laziness and inconsistency and the consequence of needing to seek refuge from the punishment in the grave or the trial of the fire. This is how important this is. Laziness is one of the diseases of the heart that Islam hates. And if you are a Muslim, you love what Allah loves and you hate what Allah hates. And Allah hates laziness. And the Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sought Allah's protection and refuge from it. The very Prophet, the most honorable, perfect human being, the messenger of Allah, sought refuge with Allah from laziness. The fact that a Muslim comes to the masjid means that they fear Allah and seek nearness to the divine. And I never ever want to beat anyone up for coming to the masjid or coming to a halak. I love for my brother and sister what I love for myself. Therefore, with beautiful words and eloquent speech, I must inspire and lovingly encourage you to elevate your ranks as a seeker of the divine and invite you to compete whether you recognize a decrease in your worship in this sacred month of Shawwal. We are to vie in good deeds with one another. Remember to the portion that you give to your soul will be how well your soul does, the proportion and order that you give to it. Souls should adhere to the straight path just as they were during the month of Ramadan. Al-Hassan al-Basri, may Allah have mercy upon him, said Allah has not set an end for the believer's work other than death. We don't stop till we die. Then he recited Surah 15, verse 99, Al-Hijjah. And worship your Lord until there comes to you the certainty of death. We want our finger to be raised if possible. And we want our lips to be moist with the remembrance of Allah until the angel actually comes to remove our soul. Indeed, Ramadan has ended, but you still have several renewed seasons of worship. 
The five daily prayers are among the highest and best good deeds. And prayer is the first thing we will be asked about of the day of judgment. Inshallah, let us discipline our souls to make small, consistent improvements which we retain and maintain in our practice in Salat habits. One of the attributes of the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they perform a few good deeds constantly. As Allah the Almighty says in Surah 70 verse 23, those who are constant in their prayer. Maintaining consistency is a sign of your love for Allah and that Allah loves you. If a person can maintain the consistency for a few small good deeds, that is a testimony to their sincerity, their ikhlas for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all deal with external forces that drive us to do good deeds or cause us to waver in performing good deeds. Good deeds sometimes rest upon something other than the love of Allah. They can be motivated by external things. But suppose a person can be consistent with a small, just a few small good deeds for the sake of Allah alone. That is also a sign that they are also consistent with their love for Allah. They are maintaining the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love and are concerned about Allah's love in their lives no matter what is happening and no matter what their emotional state is. They love Allah in adversity and they love Allah in prosperity. They love Allah when they get news that they consider bad news because they don't question the wisdom of Allah. They know that no matter what's happening is good because it is the qadr of Allah. It is from Allah. Yesterday, as Laith and I were walking on the beach, we were talking about how many people are using the cop-out of what's going on in Gaza. And they like burning out and not going to the masjid because they're mad at the qadr of Allah. Imagine standing before Allah and being angry or questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom. Coming down from the spiritual high of the last 10 nights of Ramadan, where we're pushing ourselves to the most intense levels of worship. And we suddenly hit that first day of Shawwal, Aid. It is so easy for us to return to life as it was. Our nafs get activated by all the delicacies around us, the foods around us, the talks, the celebration. But imagine if in the center of that celebration, we had this presence of heart that, yes, I'm celebrating, it's a joyous day. But my joy is in what I have just achieved, forgiveness for my sins. My joy is in maintaining my recognition and awareness of Allah and his adabs on that first day when I can eat as much as I want to. I still had requested a third and a third and a third. That's still the adab, even at a celebration. We feast and our excitatory states and nafs desires to indulge or awaken. The push to pray Salat al-Talhajud for the night of power is no longer applicable. The devils are released from their chain. And so many people told me, wow, when I woke up this morning for Aid al-Fitr, I knew the devil had been released. Just all kinds of things start happening. We should contemplate the few small good deeds we can consistently do outside of Ramadan to please Allah as a wajah. Perhaps you make it a goal that once a month you will get up for Salat al-Tahajr, maybe once a week. To help you maintain 
and retain what you gained in Ramadan. I want you to think about the small and consistent, reasonable things you achieved and how you might be able to continue them outside the month of Ramadan. Do not be deluded, my beloved brothers and sisters, by the shayateen to believe that if you do less or something small after Ramadan, that is a sign that you have lost your Ramadan. This is the trick of the whisper. Today, I want you to take some small good things that you can continually do consistently so that when Ramadan returns, those few small consistent good deeds will be increased, amplified, and done with ease so that you may be able to move into the next station or gear without it being a foreign concept continuing to elevate our ranks, continuing to build. For John, to add to your worship, fasting, or praying Salatul Tahajud one day a week, once a month. Suppose you aren't praying five times a day. Make a goal to add one more prayer consistently. And when Ramadan returns next year, you will participate in the Ramadan boot camp increase in another few small, good, consistent deeds and elevate your ranks again as a seeker of the divine in pursuit of the alchemy of happiness. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, do a few small deeds that you can, for, can, can perform consistently. Take things that don't exhaust you, small things. Allah does not tire of our worship until we tire of worshiping Allah. I would be remiss not to mention that 12 victories in wars took place during the nights of power. And the companions maintained keenness and persistence in doing good deeds, even during war and bloodshed. Imagine that they were fasting in, in war. Some of us say, oh, I just can't fast. It's just too hard for me. It was in the 100 degrees. It was 113 when I was in Saudi Arabia. These believers were in war and they were fasting. They were maintaining their keenness. Whenever we start to complain about Ramadan and to look for excuses why we can't, unless we have a medical reason, perhaps we need to measure where is our Iman? Where is my faith? The most beloved of deeds to Allah are the small, consistent ones. So may Allah allow us to take some of the good deeds performed in Ramadan and maintain them this month and throughout the year until we meet Allah. If you aspire to perform good deeds regularly, you must do the following. Number one, be sincere, sincerely and strongly determined to consistently do a few good deeds under all circumstances and conditions, no matter what happens. I will get up earlier. I will do what I've got to do to maintain these small deeds. Number two, seek refuge with Allah from laziness, from ghafla, from heedlessness. Number three, avoid rigidity. Take al-mizan, the middle road. Moderation is crucial, and you should never overburden yourself, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, do such deeds as you can do easily. Listen, beloved. Do such deeds as you can do easily as Allah will not get tired of giving rewards until you get bored and tired of performing religious deeds. And this is in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. Getting tired is cutting off. It's crimping the spiritual hose of blessings. Remember that there are blessings in perseverance. When you run a marathon, 
you don't slow down when you see the finish line. You've picked up the pace. And you want to go through that finish line with flying colors. Remember that there are blessings and perseverance. For example, whoever reads a juz of the Quran daily will read the whole Quran in one month. And whoever observes fasting for three days every month will be rewarded as if they had observed fast throughout the year. Is it worth being lazy to lose these great blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made available to us? Number five, know that it is unacceptable for whoever observes a good deed to abandon it. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, O oh, Abdullah, do not be like so-and-so. He used to get up at night for voluntary prayers, but abandon it later. And this is from Abu Khari and Muslim. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I made this class a little shorter today. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us good in this world and in the hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from the chastisement of the fire. I ask Allah not to lay a burden on us greater than we can bear. I ask Allah to have mercy on us. Oh Allah, help us to recognize that you are a protector. Help us against those who stand against faith. Oh Allah, let not our hearts deviate now that you have guided us, but grant us mercy from your own presence. For thou art the bounty, the grantor of bounties without measure. Oh Allah, let your peace come upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the family of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as you have brought peace to Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family. Truly, Allah, you are the praiseworthy and the glorious. O oh, Allah, bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And bless Ibrahim and his family. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Truly, Allah, you are the praiseworthy and the glorious. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdaka ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Transcended are you, O Allah, and praise be to you as you praise yourself. I bear witness that there is no deity except you. I seek your forgiveness, and I repent to you. Amen.